The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the X Zone, everyone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Uh, we've been checking with uh, our weather officials in the eastern part of Canada, the United States, and uh, Hurricane Fiona is certainly causing havoc, and it is causing some technical difficulties, but thankfully we've got, um, we were able to, you know, carry on with the show, even though the last hour was a wash, and we apologize for that. We're going to be talking to Kevin Killen this hour, and uh, Kevin is going to be talking to us about ghosts, the paranormal, things that go bump in the night, and much more. And Kevin, welcome to the X Zone. Thank you for having me, Rob. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Whereabouts are you located? I am in Berlin, Maryland. I'm about uh, five miles from Ocean City, Maryland, for those who like the beach. How's the weather there? Did you guys uh, have any ill effects of Hurricane Fiona? Yeah, we had some gale warnings down here. Um, fall really came in pretty quickly. It's like mm -hmm. 45 degrees outside, which is, uh, for me, it's perfect. That's my time of the year. But a lot of other people, I saw a lot of jackets earlier today, so that was kind of yeah. nice. I can I can understand that. I took our three girls out, our three dogs out earlier this morning, and uh, it was quite a shock getting out there. I go usually go out in my shorts, my sandals, you know. I'm okay. It's still summertime. I got out there and I came back upstairs, put my coat on, my long pants, and away we went. Uh, for those, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in writing and the paranormal. All right. Um, I'm a former journalist. Um, I worked in journalism for. Uh, almost a decade. Uh, I won a few awards doing that. So obviously writing, I've come from a writing family. So that was kind of, I think in my blood actually. Um, so I've been doing that on and off. Um, the, the book ghost in me, the one that, uh, I'm going to be referring to, uh, was about a 15 year venture from first word to last sentence. And for publication, it took me about 15 years to get that all done. Uh, so it's just been a, it's been a, a very odd journey, but it's been a great journey and I've learned a lot of things and I've seen a lot of things and done a lot of things and met a lot of good people along the way. Tell me, have you yourself had paranormal experiences? And if so, what kind? Yes, I've had many, as a matter of fact, um, I've had the phantom footsteps where nobody was there. I've had voices. I've picked up voices on a voice recorder. Um, I've seen doors closed by themselves. I've had apportation, which is basically ha having one object leave from where it is to and appear in the same place. I've had things disappear on me and actually end up in weird places like five months later, which I thought they were gone. Um, so I've kind of run the gambit of uh, paranormal experiences, I think. Why do you think more pe some people are more susceptible to the paranormal than others? I think uh, in, in some some cases, you're almost I think you're born with it. And that's I think my case, my background is 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 Irish German with more more Celtic uh, blood in me. So I think that's a lot of where I get my things from is because of my my heritage is more from Ireland. So I get a lot of that, I think. And that that has given me um, so the, you know. Uh, the ability to to see these things, hear these things, and, and pick up on on paranormal events. What was your first paranormal experience? I was living in Illinois. We were living in Evanston, right outside of Chicago, in a big old, rambling, uh, big house. One of those turn of the centuries one. Uh, and I was with my mother. Everybody else had gone to uh, somewhere with my father. I have I had three brothers and my father, and they they went to a an event. So it was just me and my mother, and we were downstairs in the living room, and, and I'd heard footsteps upstairs, clear footsteps. And I turned to her and said, who's that? And my mother said, well, that's my little boy. And I didn't understand that because I was the only little boy in that house that I knew. So she said later on that she did that because she was afraid because she thought somebody had broken into the house. 
but I distinctly remember those footsteps going up and down that hallway. Uh, I understand you've also heard voices and uh, seen apparitions. Yes, um, I've done a lot of EVP work, electronic voice phenomena, where you will actually uh, just run a tape recorder and and things uh, people, spirits will speak to you um, when there's nobody else in the room or, or wherever you happen to be. I've actually picked up things outside in, in cemeteries. I've picked up things inside empty buildings, things like that. Um, so I've done a lot of that. Uh, and, and that seems to work really well. I know a lot of people on these ghost shows want to have all this equipment, and, and that's great. But for me, a handheld tape recorder has worked best for me. Uh, how about the voices? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the apparitions. Um, I've seen a few of them. Um, the one that I, I clearly remember, I, I, I don't know if you're familiar with shadow people at all, but I yeah. actually had a, a really terrifying shadow experience um, living in Pennsylvania. Us. Yeah. And that thing just, it was just, it was in my bedroom and, and the thing went to the ceiling and it was about eight feet tall. And I don't know what this thing was. And, and my girlfriend at the time was kind of like, oh, you see him too. As a matter of fact, I guess she'd been seeing it for a while and never said anything to me. And that was, uh, that was interesting. And that, that kind of took me down another rabbit hole because I wanted to find out what the heck did I just see? Because there was nothing else in that room that could have made that that shadow and we we're on the second floor so it wasn't from the outside and i still have no idea to this day what that was so i understand that you also go out and do paranormal investigations yes tell us about one of your most haunting if you'll excuse the pun paranormal <laughs> investigation that you've been on okay um i i would have to say it was actually one of my earlier ones um when i was uh probably about two years out of high school so i was probably about 20 years old and i was living in fairfax county virginia and falls church to be exact in the house that i grew up in um my my house was we had a lot of people coming in my brothers had a lot of friends i had a lot of friends this and that so we had a lot of foot traffic right. uh, but this particular night everyone actually left the house and I was all alone by myself. And I was like, okay, wow, I'm, I'm here by myself. I'm going to see if I can pick anything up. Cause I had been having some experiences in my bedroom, some footsteps and things like that. And I, I figured there was something there. So um, I don't know if you're familiar, you might be familiar with the old boom boxes back in the oh, day yeah. with dual cassettes and the, yeah. and the speakers. Yeah. Uh, so I had one of those and I went ahead and uh, hit the tape recorder and let the old tape record, you know, the tape cassettes run. Yeah. Um, and I left the the house and went to a friend's house for about an hour, hour and a half and came back and around the tape. And uh, right at the last minute or two of the tape, I got what sounded like someone was banging on the machine. And that, you know, I was like, well, there's nobody here. And right. then at the very end, this voice came through and said, ha ha, I have shown you. Now, the creepy thing about that is I had asked that question. If there is anybody here, please show me. And then whatever was there answered my question right at the very end of that tape. And that was probably, that's always stuck with me because I'm still debating whether that was an evil thing or if it was just a spirit messing with me because it was as if you recorded somebody's voice and turned it way down low. And that's right. what it sounded like. So that was my first one. And that, that actually has stuck with me to this day. What are some of the most recent ones you've worked on? Okay, I'm working on a book currently called Eastern Shore Ghosts, and it's about the eastern shore of, of Maryland right now. And, and we have a very haunted area. Um, this place is very old. Obviously, the English, you know, settled uh, up and down the East Coast way back when. Um, so I've been to a couple of cemeteries that have reputedly been haunted. And um, I... I I've picked up a few things, not anything really substantial, but there's been a lot of a couple weird things that have happened during these investigations, um, such as there was um, a weird incident with some birds at one of the cemeteries that just really didn't make it. It was crows, and it didn't really make any sense to me. Um, I kind of thought I saw something duck behind a, sem a gravestone, and, and this was actually in the morning. This was about 7 o'clock in the morning, and I actually went over there, and there was nothing there, so I don't know if maybe I caught a glimpse of something, but... Um, that was probably one of the right now one of the most recent um, ones that is really just kind of I'm, I'm baffled to to what happened there, um, and I've still got um, a lot more to to do to finish this book. So I'm excited about uh, continuing to uh, investigate. Have you ever done anything in Fort McHenry? No, I have not, and I know that that's uh, that area is just chock full of stuff. 
Um, I've, I've got Haunted Maryland books. So I've actually read about Haunted Maryland, Haunted Virginia. Um, I have such a huge bucket list of places I want to go um, that are reputedly haunted. And, and obviously, yeah, Fort McHenry in the Baltimore area is just they have a lot of things going on up there. Um, why do you think cemeteries are haunted? These people are dead. Um, why, why do they stick around? I, I mean, I understand that they, there's ghosts and or spirits in, in bars, hotels, and you know they, they make visitations to those who have been left behind. But why would they stick around a cemetery? I believe that it's the energy. Um, I, I think honestly, what what it is is it's it's their final resting place, yeah. and I think they're just kind of they. I, I don't think they, in my opinion, they don't stick around. They just kind of like float through. Um, and, and my vi vision of, of how spirits can maneuver through the world or their world is the old Pac-Man game. Remember when you can go out the one side of the, yeah. the, the screen and then you come yeah. in the other side? That's what I envision spirits do in their world, in our world. That's how they, they go back and forth. And, and honestly, that's, that's a theory I have about Bigfoot, but we'll get into that another time. But I think that's kind of how, how they see Bigfoots is they teleport. And that's why I think what they do with cemeteries is they just kind of pop in and out. Um, and I think the emotion when people go to cemeteries to visit their loved ones, put flowers on the graves and such, I think that brings that out and they draw from that and they can kind of actually kind of take a look at them and say, you know, hey, that's great. You're grieving for me. And I think that's what they don't I don't necessarily think they're they're kept there, but they're they're brought there, I think, by the energy. All right, stand by. We've got to take a short break. We'll be right back. Exo Nation, our guest is Kevin uh, Kevin Killen. And uh, Kevin, what's the best website for our listeners to visit you on and learn more about you? Um, you can actually go to my email. It's uh, K-K-I-L-L-E-N, K-Killen, B as in boy, T as in Tom, K-Killen, B-T, at gmail.com. And if you have any questions, concerns, or anything, please feel free to hit me up. I, I love talking to people. Um, you can also visit me at ozarkmountain.com. That's the publishing company that Great. publishes my book, and they have a little bit of, of a bio there. But the best way to directly talk to me is through my email. And where is your books, uh, book available? Is it on Amazon? Barnes yes, Noble, it's on Amazon, Amazon, pretty much any .com that sells books. You can pretty much get it. It's still, in, I believe, in Barnes & Noble's br brick and mortar. But, but uh, Amazon and, and Ozark okay. Mountain are probably the two best places. All right, my friend, please stand by. We'll be back on the other side of this short break. This is The Exxon. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Do you enjoy paranormal sci-fi romance, yet find yourself tired of the same old themes and storylines? Then you won't want to miss Kahir O'Donnell's latest exciting release, To Taste You Again. Alien Lord Kane McKean knew the moment that his destined mate was born. He watched from afar, waiting for her to grow from child to woman. However, before she was old enough, she was stolen from her home world by flesh pirates. Kane searched ten long years to find her held in a suspension chamber a ten-year-old girl in a woman's body. He rescued her and swore to give her time to grow up, but with his very life depending upon winning her as a mate, has he waited too long? Get your copy today. To Taste You Again by Kahira O'Donnell is now available on Amazon or kahiraodonnell.com. And welcome back, everyone. Kevin Killen is my guest this hour. And uh, Kevin, what is the craziest experience you've ever had? Mm, wow, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I've, I've kind of had so many. I, I I don't know. Give me your top three. To... Give me your top three. Top three. Okay. Um, top the probably number one would have to be the EVP I just described, yeah. which was my first one. That 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 kind of kicked off the whole wanting to find out what really is out there, number one. Number two was when I was in college, a few years later in Pennsylvania, I actually lived in a haunted house. And uh, me and my roommate, would uh, we'd hear things, we'd see things, and uh, we never said anything to each other until one time when my roommate was like, we were, we were alone on a Sunday, I think. We were watching football or something. And he turns to me and said, hey, well, you're by yourself. Do you, hear, do you feel or hear any weird stuff going on around here? 
And I felt like so relieved. I thought I was going crazy, honestly. And we compared notes and talked about it. We were seeing and hearing the same things. And uh, it turned out later we found out that it was an old owner named George who had come back to make sure that we were going to take care of his house. But for about five or six months that we lived there, we really had a lot of crazy experiences. Really? Like um, the, the back door would open and it sounded like somebody would come in the house. So I'd be back in my bedroom and I'd come out thinking my roommate came home. He worked nights and go out there. And nobody's there. The door wasn't ever open. I'd hear the bathtub running thinking it was him. Nobody would come out of the bathroom and it wasn't him. Just and, and, weird and, things and, like and that. The water would, and the water would, would be running? The, the the water was it was it was sounding like the water was running and actually one or two times the water did run so it, it actually turned on the the bathtub really yeah it was it was the craziest thing that the toilet would flush by itself and we'd think it was each other and it wasn't either one of us so I think that <laughs> had to be probably um, right up there and probably the third um, when I was working in Virginia um, I worked for many years in a um, residential facility for drug and alcohol patients right and uh one one week um i was working on a saturday evening and, and i'd always known that there, I'd, I'd, I'd experienced things for a few years working there by myself or whatever but one one day my director actually worked with me because she couldn't find anybody else to work and she was scared of the dark and she was scared she was like i don't know how you do this blah 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 and we just heard all this crazy stuff like books being thrown around and footsteps and doors closing and she's not one to like scare easily or believe anything and she was just like what the hell was that and i said oh that's like a nightly occurrence here stacy and she was like are you kidding i said no and she said there's nobody here i said uh, yeah stay here i'll go so I, of course i went back to the back hallway and of course nobody was there but it freaked her out she never worked another night shift while while i was there so that was kind of the top three i think in my wow. experience yeah how do, how do you come across these cases? Do people write you and say, hey, Kevin, this is what's going on. You should come over here and check it out. Yeah, word of mouth. Um, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an avid reader. I'm a voracious reader. I have a, a pretty well-stocked library. So I'm always trying to get my hands on any kind of book, really. But Paranormal seems to be one of the ones that have obviously attracted me. And, I, and I've heard and, and read about a lot of the a lot of alleged hauntings in, in, in the areas um, here. And, and I've been to a, a bunch, I've lived in a, a couple different states and, and I've just, you know, kind of remembered, oh, hey, there's supposed to be a ghost here. And, and again, or, or somebody will know um, and say, oh, hey, have you checked this place out that they're supposedly having this? And this is kind of how the book that I'm working on now is coming together is I've, I've read or heard about the places I've investigated, I'm still getting people, like you said, people will email me or somebody at work will say, oh, hey, did you hear about this? Or, or a friend will say, hey, did you hear about this place? And and I'll say, no, I don't. And I'll jot it down. And and uh, when I can find the time, I'll run over there. So based on your experience and your encounters and what you've seen, heard, and um, Man, the last one in the, in the place where you worked with your with your uh, supervisor, I can understand why she wouldn't want to work there, especially at night. Uh, what is a ghost? I think, uh, from my experience, I think it's it's an emotional leftover. I think it. it I, I'm not quite sure it's part of a soul. I'm not really sure it's that, but I think it's kind of an emotional leftover from from our body. Like you know, when we pass, we have. Mm -hmm uh something that comes out maybe it's a soul something like that and i think it's just kind of uh, a spirit or whatever you want to call it i know a lot of people um have varied ideas what it may or may not be but i just think it's kind of like leftover emotions and and things like that leftover emotions uh, something like something being caught within the the electromagnetic field that puts it through a loop like uh, like the old tapes remember that reel to reel you could just do a yes loop and, yeah yes absolutely um that that's actually one one uh theory is the stone tape theory where you know people today see you know native americans running across their their highways or in england it's been documented that you know a uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a century of, of Roman soldiers cross their path and they're like, well, this is crazy. This is 2022. You can't see that. So again, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I think some of the things I've experienced obviously has to do with that. And I worked a little bit in radio uh, in college and I did understand the bulk eraser 
and the oh, ions yeah. and the tape. So I honestly, yeah. that, that, that does make sense. If you think we have a magnetic field around the earth, that would totally make sense that it would just kind of grab things, you know? So what are the, what other aspects of the paranormal are you interested in? Uh, UFOs, Bigfoot? Yeah. I, I, you know, I've never seen a, a UFO, but I, I do believe I keep an open mind. Uh, there's just been, I think too many things out there that, that can be just dismissed. Um, cryptids. I'm, I'm very interested in cryptids. And, and again, as I was explaining earlier, I've been in places and in, in the wilds of, of certain places like West Virginia, where you could see where a, a something like a Bigfoot would definitely uh, be able to survive right. uh, without being detected. Hmm. Uh, but with all, everybody having a, a high definition camera in their in their phones these days, I don't understand why there hasn't been more photographic evidence of these creatures. And and man, they've been evading humans from day one, I would imagine. And they do such a great job. Yeah, we should get a hold of them and teach our troops how to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that, that's one thing that's always really kind of baffled me as well, is that I had actually found out this recently. I was actually watching the movie Predator. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're familiar with that. Yeah, with sure. Arnold and I always thought Andy, to myself, maybe. why... Yeah, why, why, why did, why did the army never set out? You know, have soldiers go into the wilds of eastern Washington to try and find Bigfoot? Well, they found out that they actually have done this, and they were so elusive they never found anything. Man. And I always wondered about, you know, what's going on. But again, my theory is simply where some people will say uh, th they're here all the time. I think that they go back and forth between portals. That's how you don't see them. Is they go, they can move through portals and get um transported wherever they want to go through these holes in the earth that you can't see mm -hmm. and i think the the 411 uh series kind of has a little bit to touch touch on that as well i'm sure you're familiar with those with the disappearances in the state parks down here yeah and i think that's kind of how come we don't see bigfoots and that would explain you know if if they pass you know they go they take their their dead and they go into the portal and they end up wherever what whatever dimension that they are. And I just think that's kind of what, what that is. But that's, again, that's my personal theory. So, so we're talking about terrestrial wormholes. Yes. Wow. It makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Uh, Bigfoot, you know, it's, I, I, I don't know, you know, we've had so many people on the show and I, I thought by now I've been doing the show 33 years. I thought by now, there would be more evidence that would be brought forward, not only with Bigfoot, but UFOs, uh, lake monsters, sea monsters, the Bermuda Triangle, the the, the Devil's Triangle, the Hoodoo Sea, uh, Atlantis, and nothing. Nothing. You would think that with the advances made in, with technology, that there would be some smoking gun from some aspect of the paranormal, but there isn't. <laughs> Absolutely. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, honestly, and I, I've discussed this with other people, and, and, and my theory with that is the fact that if we knew, like, if we actually knew what a ghost was or mm -hmm. what the you, I, I think it's like a big letdown. I, and I, I honestly, in my opinion, I don't think we're supposed to. We're supposed to get these little breadcrumbs and, and things like that. And, and again, um, I'm sure you're familiar with the the, the Art Bell the 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 great um talk show host who passed yeah, sure. uh, yeah. recently um yes he, he he was one he 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 never believed or didn't believe he gave you that forum to express your opinions yeah. and everything and he talked about the quickening with the earth and and the world and and, and i think i've seen some of this really? with, with, with these things with 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 things happening and speeding up and things going on in the world he talked about these things on his show, and he also bring professors and people to talk about that. And again, I just think it's not supposed to be. I think, again, we have little breadcrumbs that are supposed to be, but we're not going to get the full picture ever. And I have no idea why that is. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's in itself a mystery. How about Skinwalker Ranch? Any con ideas on that? Um, that, that place I would love to visit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I just know that... Uh, there are places in this world where the energy is more concentrated and things do happen that are unexplainable. And I think a lot of these places are all tied together because it's been documented that 
you know, you'll have a UFO event, you'll have a Bigfoot event, you'll have a, uh, some haunting close together. And there's almost no way to not draw the conclusion that A plus B equals C. And I think that's kind of what that is. And again, the Native Americans were very intelligent the way that they they thought of things and did yeah. things. And they knew these things way back when. And, and of course, you know, a lot of the white people didn't even want to listen to that. And they just kind of blew them off and everything. But they're very intelligent. A lot of their stories talk about these beings and things like the, uh, you know, the skinwalkers and, yeah. And, and this and that. And I've actually known um, some people that have been, you know, Apache, native, you know, Apaches who have told me a lot of stories about Arizona, things like where they came from. And it's just amazing some of the stories that they talk about. And they're not joking. That's, this is what they've, they've believed and seen and everything. So I just think they're just pockets of energy that, you know, just it just it just is. So why do you think we don't listen to these people who who have had these stories passed down generation after generation after generation. Well, I think uh, there's still that stigma and, and, and only recently have we kind of, I don't want to say mainstream cause I hate saying that, but I think mainstreamed mm -hmm. these things. So you, you're, I'm actually reading stories about UFOs and paranormal experiences in newspapers where you never saw that before unless it was a Halloween thing. And then that right. they basically did that. So I think, again, there's a stigma. And I, I, I always, to you know, when I first got into this, I, I didn't tell a lot of people either because I knew that they thought I was crazy. And I knew I wasn't. But a lot of people, they're, they're, you know, you'll tell them a story and they'll like, okay, they'll slowly back away. And, oh, okay, sure. You know, and give you that. And then they'll turn and run. And it's just like, okay. So, and I think that's one of the things is that a lot of people don't want to talk about it. It's kind of like, you know, because that, and, and also, you know, and I'm going to throw this out there too, because I think this does go part and parcel, is that there have been a lot of um, um, breakthroughs in psychiatrics. Right. So I think, and again, with me working, I work with co-occurring people and I've, I've worked with them for many years. And I think that that could be part of it as well is that, you know, when they say they're delusional and they're seeing things, they really are seeing things, but it's not paranormal. It's just, Hey, if you take this drug, this will calm you down. Um, so there's some of that too, but it's, it's the stigma of mental illness, I think, and the craziness that I think a lot of people don't want to don't want to do that. And, and again, the way that the native Americans have been treated in this, in this country, especially over the years, it's just kind of, you know, uh, or, you know, it's a lot true. of people just don't give them the benefit of the doubt. But like I said, I've read a lot of material and I've known some native Americans and they're great people. I agree with you there, my man, you and I have to take our break. Please stand by and XOR nation, Kevin and I will return talking more about ghost hauntings, things that go bump in the night and who knows what else we'll get into. Kevin, stand by. We'll be right back. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Welcome back, uh, Kevin Killen is our guest. And uh, Kevin, what is your take on the alien abduction scenario? Um, I think 
that I think they're they're just what they are. They're 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 probing us. The the the, the aliens do exist, and they're coming down here. They're trying to find, for whatever reason, I I, I think maybe it's to not really immobilize, but you know, find out what we're about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think honestly that they have more intelligence and stuff than we do. And I think a lot of these UFO sightings are increasing. Um, and again, the government still will, you know, play them off like, oh, it's a stealth bomber, this and that. But I, I think there's a little more to it than that. So I just think that they're, they're just kind of here to say, yeah, we're here and, and, you know, we'll do what we, what we want. Do you think that these visitors, wherever they're from, pose a threat to humanity? No, I think they just want to learn. I, I think they just want to learn. Um, and, and again, this one thing that I, I've I've come across with humanity is if you look outside and you look at the mountains and you look at the trees and you look at the grass and some of the wonders of the world and you think, okay, we can't be it. I mean, man likes to destroy things, but yeah. to create such beauty that there has to have been something else before us. So again, like I said, and I'm not going to get into a tangent on religion because I consider myself spiritual, but there is something out there, I believe, whether it's whatever you want to call it, God or whatever. So I, I just think that they're kind of here to study like what we're doing. Um, why do you think the governments of the world are, are, are just not coming clean with what they know and say, okay, you know what guys for 50, 60 years, we've been, We've been lying to you, but we want to come clean. Yes, there are UFOs. Yes, they have visited. Yes, everything you think about the UFOs, the alien abductions, it's true. Why don't they just come out and say that? Well, I think knowledge is power for them. And and if they keep it to themselves, it's kind of like the, you know, the, the, the wily card player who keeps the cards close to their vest. And also, you know, like I said, the whole knowledge is power thing is, is we'll will disseminate this information when we need it for whatever purpose. And, and it, it may be for some sort of control. And I, I think, yeah. honestly, that's just what it is, is that it's just they know these things. And, and again, I've had people tell me um, that who were in the military, high up in the military, that there's things that we'll never know, that, they'll, that, the, this go- <laughs> that, that the government knows so many different things, not just about UFOs, but, but right. other things that they just you're never going to know in your, your lifetime. But I think it's just knowledge is power, that kind of thing. Here's a hypothetical situation. You're driving on a main highway near where you live. It's late at night, 3 o'clock in the morning, let's say. You're the only vehicle on the road. All of a sudden, a spacecraft lands in front of you. You get out of your vehicle, and uh, an alien gets out of his craft. You guys meet. What would be your conversation? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, basically, you know, what are you doing here? That would probably be my first question. And 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 basically, <laughs> you know, I, I remember the, you know, the 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 cartoons growing up and everything. It was always they would say, "Take me to your leader," right? Which yeah. you know, I, I always thought that was silly. But again, um, I I probably just you know, hey, what are you doing here? And then you know, maybe just talk. Because I think a lot of them um, can read your thoughts, so you don't really have to verbally communicate with them they'll, they'll know what you're going to say anyway and that's again that goes towards their intelligence but i think we just talk you know basically why are you here and what do you want and and what do you hope to accomplish things like that i'm sure that you've heard about the crash in roswell new mexico going yes. back to 47 i believe do you think it was ufo that was crashed there or do you think it was uh, an experimental craft or even the mogul project i believe it was a uh, it was a spacecraft I believe that somewhere in Area 51, they have or had some piece of an alien, some part of an alien or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think, honestly, uh, yeah, that that was, I, I think, in, in my opinion, I've done a, done some reading and I've talked to a lot of UFOlogists and things like that. And, and I've formed the opinion that I believe that it was. And again, I've known people in the military that have been pretty high up that have kind of told me some things that are just kind of mind-blowing and they've come to pass and this was you know way back when that they actually said keep an eye on this this is going to happen and sure sure enough it did so i think yeah it was a, it was an alien what do you tell people when they ask you why you wanted to become a paranormal investigator or or an author who writes about the paranormal um you know <laughs> not to steal the line from the x-files but the truth is out there I know that sounds pretty cheesy and cliche, but honestly, that's kind of what 
what I do this for is because I want to know why. Because again, when you have an experience of any kind of paranormal event, it changes your life forever. And and I certainly have been changed uh, since I was five years old when I had my first experience and continue up to this day where um, I'm having them more sporadically, but I'm still having them. Um, so I, again, it's just, I, I, I just want to know like, what, what, what is this and why, you know, yeah. and again, having a journalistic background, you know, asking the five questions is, is always been my thing. How close do you think you are to getting your answer? Not even scratching the surface. No, I... Again, I, I think that the breadcrumbs are there and that's all we're ever going to get. But that's what makes this exciting because I could sit there and I could investigate this alleged haunted house and really get nothing. And somebody around the world can do the same thing and they'll get all sorts of stuff, which is really cool. So again, it's just, that's another thing. It's kind of, you know, some, mm. some places would seem it was unfair, but yeah, I, I don't think we've even touched the surface of anything. All right. Here's a strange question for you since we're talking about the strange. All right. What three people, living or dead, would you invite to a dinner a dinner party? <laughs> um, number one, Edgar Allan Poe. Why? Uh, he I've I've loved Poe since I was about uh, maybe eight nine years old. Um, really early on, um, I've followed, you know, read a lot of his stuff throughout high school, throughout college, to this day. Um, just he's a fascinating figure, and obviously being a writer yeah. and and the things and i i just love to pick his brain about what really he was really about and why did he write all these really dark things even though he had a pretty horrible career i don't believe he died drunk in a gutter but that's just my opinion i think something happened to him all right we've got edgar Allan poe two more people uh john lennon oh big time i want to go to that dinner I, that would be uh, i've i've my brother, who's older than me, turned me on to the Beatles at a very young age, and, and I've followed John Lennon's career, and I've listened to a lot of videos and, and songs. I love the Beatles myself, but just there was something about that man. He was very intelligent, and he had so much to say, and in and, and, and the short time he was here, he, he did change the world, and I just yeah. think, you know, again, just asking him why and just let, letting him talk would just be, you know, just oh, wow, okay. you know? I, I, I agree. I agree. Okay. Number three. Um, I'm going to go a little political here, and I'm going to say uh, Gandhi. Ooh, that's not political. I think that's very wise. I mean, I know, you know, with the whole, you know, but again, with it, it would be Gandhi 1 and then Martin Luther King Jr. 1A, uh, those two. And just basically, again, you know, why do you because I, I think honestly in, in some cases in a lot of these cases with people like gandhi and king they were chosen to do this because not everybody can do these things but these two people did what they did and and yeah. they were it, they were supposed to it was somebody said you, you're going to do these things and they did it and they changed the world and again i just think they they saw and did so many fascinating things and they died way too young well they just died the way they died was horrible you know, um, one thing that, that Martin Luther King proved is an old theory or an old saying I've always had. The difference between a dream and reality was doing it. He had the dream, and he did it. Yes. You know, and Gandhi, a man must do what a man must do, plain and simple. It seems that simplicity has been lost in this world of ours, Kevin. Uh, yes. Life is simple. We complicate it. Uh -huh. And it's like, what the heck? Hey, yeah. you and I have to take our final break. Great talking to you. And uh, we'll be back on the other side as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon with our special guest this hour, Kevin Killen. And uh, when we get back, I'm going to let Kevin give you his email address so that if you have any questions or if you'd like to shoot some questions his way, we'll give it to you then. I'm Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. Go for it. To be accosted in her bed and abducted by aliens was the last thing Michelle expected. Yet the fateful morning of her destined death changed everything. Lord Lan Ramos, Alpha King of Vidar, the monstrous befanged alien looming over her bed, was her destined mate come to save her from certain death. He is a telepathic mute shifter. 
Can Michelle accept him and his animal? Once on land's home planet, Michelle becomes increasingly psychic, revealing her as the fabled oracle of Vidar. As factions conspire to destroy them, will they overcome mounting threats? Will Michelle's growing gifts save them or ultimately destroy her? Don't miss this sci-fi shifter romance with charismatic and engaging characters. Get your copy today, The Oracle of Vidar, available on Amazon or kahiraodonnell.com. That's C-A-H-I-R-A-O-D-O-N-N-E-L-L.com. Welcome back, everyone. Kevin Killen is our special guest. Kevin, give our listeners your email address again. Okay, it's uh, K Killen, K K I L L E N, B is in boy, T is in Tom at gmail.com, K Killen BT at gmail.com. Um, if I may, Rob, just sure. quickly, I was thinking um, three more people that I would actually love to, to talk to and pick their brain, and they're, they're, they're also deceased. Okay. Um, I'm a big music lover. Uh, Kurt Cobain, Chris Cornell, and Lane Staley. I would love Good. to talk to all Good. three of them because I, I love their music and they all had something to say and they all died, in my opinion, way too, way too soon. Uh, who was it that uh, the Righteous Brothers who did uh, Rock and Roll Heaven? Yes. That's a hell of a song. Can you imagine those three with John Lennon sitting at the same <laughs> table or a, ja a jam session? My yes, God. that would just be mind blowing. Give me your, your take on the JFK assassination. I, in my opinion, I think the mob did it. I think uh, because JFK made the deal with, uh, what was it named, Gene Connor? Mm -hmm. uh, and he didn't give Gene Connor what the agreement was. And then Bobby Kennedy went after him. So I yeah. think, honestly, I think it was a mob hit. I think that, and again, like I said, I, the, and I've been to Dealey Plaza. And it's got a, it's got its own vibe. It's got it really a really is. really weird vibe. It, it's it's unfortunate now because it was built up so much. They got a, like a really big freeway running next to it. But I could still feel like the remnants of just you could feel it. It's just it's a really eerie place. One more question for you, my friend. Nine eleven. You know, uh, I'm not big into conspiracy theories, or at least I try not to be. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I've listened to truthers and, and things like that. I, I, I just honestly think, I just think there was just some like pissed off people that wanted to get back in America. And the reason I say that is because I don't know if you're familiar with basketball at all. No. Okay. Well, um, we used to have a, a player down here when I was living in DC, his name was Manute Bowl. He was seven foot seven and he was from the Sudan. And in the early 90s, he had, he had finished his career, and he went back to Sudan to help his people. And he had told the government about bin Laden. He said, you got to watch this guy. This guy's coming into the villages here, and he's talking all this stuff, and I think he's going to do something. And the government turned his back on him, and the American government was like, yeah, okay, yeah, we got an eye on him. Yeah, whatever, dude. You're a basketball player. Move along. And look what happened. And, and I'll never forget that. And, and I think the government has a tendency to do that. At times, when when normal citizens say, "Hey, you know, keep an eye on these people," they just turn a blind eye towards them. And I think a lot of this is like with the school shootings. This is what's happening: is that there's clear signs out there, and we're not picking up. Do you think that uh, that everyone in the United States should have the right to bear arms? I do. I'm, I I do respect the Second Amendment tremendously, and I think that again, that is something that. It is in the constitution, or it is in the. You should be able to. I mean, yeah. again, I know that there's this big thing, and and for me, working with co-occurring people, it starts with mental illness, and we don't, we do not have enough of help, and or the money to help these people, and I think that's where it starts. It's not because again, I know I'll probably get blasted for this. It's not the guns that kill people; it's the people that do. That's right. That's right. And again, mental illness is rampant, and again, there, and I've seen uh, psychotic meltdowns, and they're scary. And that's something you, when they say they're off their meds, they really mean they're off their meds. And I've seen psychotic breaks and they're not, they're not a picnic. Do you attribute the mental illness issue to the vast number and growing number of homeless people that are in the United States and Canada? I believe that does contribute. 
Uh, one thing that I've found working with co-occurring adults and substance abuse is I actually came across a lot of people that wanted to be homeless. That really? They chose to drop out of society, and that just blew, blew my mind. I couldn't understand where we could house you in our facility for six months out of the year when it was winter. The minute spring hit, they're out the door living in the woods. And they wanted to be there. And it just blows my mind that they, but that's kind of the, the way they are. So, again, I, I don't understand that point. But I, I think that is part of it. And, again, a lot of mental mental um, mental health is not addressed properly. And we do not have the resources to, to deal with it. I mean, you got these veterans coming back. you got the veterans now. You've got young people. Young people have a lot of stressors in their life and, and people are just not getting the help. They're stretched thin and, and doctors are just like, Oh, here, try this one. That didn't work. Try this drug, try this drug. I've seen it in my own work workplace. I mean, <laughs> we have a lot of doctor feel goods. You know, you were talking about uh, the way that the homeless feel when you were talking about uh, them, you know, in the winter time in, in the hospitals or in the institutions. And then in the summer, they sleep in the woods. I, I interviewed a, a homeless person not that long ago. Because here in St. Catharines, we have one hell of a problem with the homeless. We have encampments all over the place. We find mm -hmm. syringes all over the place, uh, human feces all over the place. And I said, why? Why are you homeless? He says, he looked at me and had a smirk on his face. He said, you pay taxes, right? You've got all this responsibility, right? You've got to work for your money, right? You've got to pay for your food, right? You've got to pay for your medication, right? The government pays me a social security check or a, or a disability check. I don't have to pay taxes. I don't have to report to anybody. I get my medicine free. I get food free. He said, it pays to be homeless. Yeah. Like, holy cow. Uh -huh. And I said, well, why don't you get a job? Better yourself. I like who I am. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we found a lot of that down here. Like I said, the Seattle and Portland and San Francisco come to mind immediately, but they're springing up all over the place. My father and brother live in Dallas or outside of Dallas, Texas, and I talked to them and they're talking about how they're seeing a lot of encampments uh, springing up under overpasses now. Yeah. that weren't there before but they're springing up all over the place but yeah that's kind of the some in, in a lot of these cases the mentality of, of these people is that that's what they they want to do this yeah and again for for us i don't see how why would you want to sleep in a tent on a sidewalk rather than sleep in a house on a bed but again that's you know <laughs> I, I, I don't i don't understand, I don't understand it. it personally no I don't, you know, I don't and, either. I, I think it's a real problem. And I don't think I've read a couple of articles uh, on, on certain places in the United States and, and the governments have no idea what to do with these people. Nobody knows what to do. They didn't expect this to happen. And all of a yeah. sudden now it does. They can't do anything. And they just, you know, just kick the can down the road. That's exactly what they do up here in Canada. You've got three levels of government. You have municipal, which is in this case, the city of St. Catharines. Then you have regional, which is the regional municipality of Niagara. And then you have the provincial government of the province of Ontario. And then if you want to go one step further, then you've got the federal government. Um, between the city, the region, and the province, they kind of play the game, blame game and put the blame on everybody else except them. And it's come to a point where the city of Hamilton, which is about 40 minutes from here, actually puts their homeless on a bus with a $50 bill and drives them to St. Catharines. Wow. Yeah. But again, like I said, that, that, that gentleman, you know, he, he made all the points. I mean, honestly, who's the, and kind of, if you think about it, who's the sucker, Yeah. you know, and I hate to feel like, and again, I've had many of these conversations because we try to keep them in the facilities, but they're like, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to go live in the woods till it's uh, winter time. And hey, listen, Kevin, the time has come when you and I must say so long for tonight. Love to have you back on the air. It was great talking to you. And uh, once again, give us your email address. Sure. Um, it's uh, K-K-I-L-L-E-N, B is in boy, T is in Tom, KKillenBT at gmail.com. And uh, I, I had a blast, uh, and I would love to come back anytime. You got it, my friend. Take care of yourself. Be safe out there. Thank you. You do the same, sir. Still talking there, Kevin. Thanks, O Nation. That was Kevin Killen. What a guy, huh? I like the way he thinks. He calls. He's a he's a straight shooter. 
He calls it as he sees it, which is the best way to be. Hey, listen, XO Nation. Now, when we come back from the break at the top of the hour, I'm going to be joined by my good friend, uh, Dr. Be uh, Dr. David Gruder. We're going to be talking about something very different that he's working on. So that is coming up in the next hour. Like I said, I'll be back in about, ooh, 10 minutes from now. But until then, take care of yourself and stay out of trouble.